in this video I want to talk about enzymes and this first video about enzymes is going to be a brief intro okay and just kind of what they are why they're important to biochemistry and that sort of deal so enzymes you might have heard them referred to as biological catalysts biological catalysts and if you've learned about catalysts before in general chemistry you know that catalysts increase the rate of a reaction right so in biochemistry a lot of the things we're going to talk about are particular biochemical reactions reactions that happen by bio in biological systems and nearly all of them um, are, are enzyme catalyzed so it's important to understand enzymes and how they work so that we can understand those reactions better so enzymes are biological catalysts and most of them most of them are proteins most actually nearly all of them are proteins and which is why we learned about protein structure in the previous videos because again if we want to understand enzymes and they are, if they're proteins and we need to understand protein structure in order to understand something uh, function we need to know its its structure and how that sort of works the reason why I said most is because some um, some RNAs catalyze their own splicing not really terribly important but um, at least not for this video um, but that's why I wrote most but pretty much all the ones that we'll be talking about in future videos are proteins so how is it that enzymes increase the rate of the react increase the rate of a reaction what they do is you probably already know this they lower the activation energy of a reaction they lower the activation energy, right? And specifically, they do they lower the activation energy um, without altering without altering the thermodynamics of the reaction. Okay. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, Activation energy, that's that's a, an ordeal or a, a thought or an idea that deals with kinetics and and um, which is not thermodynamics. Essentially what I want to get at here is something a very, very important idea, and that is that the delta G of a reaction is not altered or changed. It's not altered or changed by an enzyme. Okay, so this essentially means that if a reaction has a delta G that's negative, then it will stay negative, right? Or specifically, if del the delta G of a particular reaction is negative seven kilocalories, then that reaction will always have a delta G of negative seven kilocalories, no matter what enzyme you attach. It's just going to help the reaction achieve that um, that you know completion earlier or quicker. Okay, so. Um, so, and in addition, how do they lower the activation energy? Um, they're actually before I get to that. Another thing they do is they um, they increase rate constants. They increase rate constants, and um, if you if you kind of don't remember what what the, what a rate constant is, let me just sort of show you here briefly. If you remember, rate laws used to be written in GChem like this where there's rate equals k times the substrate const or excuse me the reactant concentration raised to a certain reaction order um, so these are the reactants in a reaction and these are their orders which sort of tell you how to what extent changing this, the concentration of the substrate or the reactants increases the rate of the reaction so if you increase the if you want to increase the rate of the reaction you either increase the concentration of the reactants or you can increase the rate constant so that sometimes some enzymes what they'll do is they'll um, they'll increase rate constants okay now another thing that another idea that we need to talk about when we talk about enzymes is what enzymes really bind to and um, or what binds enzymes and the term that's used for things that bind an enzyme is a substrate and so substrates bind to enzymes um, and specifically they bind at a particular location they bind at what's called the active site okay so what is the active site the active site is just an area that is part of the protein where the substrate is supposed to bind so kind of give you a little a little uh, 
idea of what that sort of looks like is if you have a, a protein that's, or a specific enzyme it looks like this okay it looks like this and there's like a portion of it looks like, well, it looks like that let's just call this the active site that's where the substrate is supposed to bind right and notice it's kind of like a semicircle here okay imagine that is the active site that means that the substrate would probably be something circular right so this would be a substrate that would bind here right so if once it's bound it would look like this right something like that okay and um actually let me notice note that this is here the enzyme e okay so the active site is just an area that that is particular to where the substrate binds and what i want to note here uh is that it's very very specific enzymes are very specific for what they bind um so um for instance, a, one thing that we mentioned, I think, before when we were talking about um, cellulose versus starch, for instance, or glycogen, is that the alpha linkages versus the beta linkages. Now, that's those are sort of stereoisomers. Sometimes re an enzyme will catalyze the reaction uh, for a particular stereoisomer and not the other. So, although those are, you know, could be nearly identical in structure, um, the the enzyme still might not work. Okay, so they're very, very specific. Sometimes even stereo specific. Okay. Now, exactly what do they do? They do this thing. What they do is they. What do enzymes really do? The way they lower the activation energy. Okay. Is they stabilize the transition state. I'm writing this in all caps because I feel this is very important. Stabilize the transition state. What is that? This transition state, before I go on, is sort of denoted by this little cross with two, or this little line with two crosses. Okay, so uh, I'm going to draw this diagram, this free energy diagram for, uh, uh, what's it called? Oops. Um, so, you may have seen this before, um, a free energy diagram written like this, when we're talking about enzymes, we think about um, this diagram, where on the y-axis we have free energy, Gibbs free energy, right, which is G, of course, right, and um, the x-axis is reaction progress. going to the right so as the reaction progresses so if we think about it we let's say we have reactants at this particular energy level right and I'll, I'll, I'll label this in just a second as the reaction progresses we have to go up in energy reach a certain point and then we come back and the reaction goes to completion okay so let me know um, some details about this so initially here we have some reactants at this particular energy level so we have reactants there. That's kind of small if you can't read that. That is reactants. Um, over here, at the end of the reaction, after the reaction has gone to completion, we have products. Okay. Now, before we can actually, before we, the reaction can actually proceed towards products, it has to go up in energy before it comes down in energy. And actually, before I go on about that, I want to note here that this particular reaction I have here has a negative delta G. Okay. Um, so delta G is just the the, the uh, product, the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. So the delta G here is actually in this case negative because the product's energy is lower than the reactants. So the final energy minus the initial energy will give you a negative value. So this is a spontaneous reaction. But before but before we can actually have this reaction occur spontaneously, we need to uh, reach this particular energy level before the reaction proceeds towards the products. Now, that energy, as you may know already, is called the activation energy. Okay, so the energy between the reactants to here, right, that difference in energy from here to here is the EA, or the activation energy. Okay, forgot to note that here, EA. Okay, now what an enzyme does is it lowers the, en the activation energy. So you might already know, right, that that if you have, so this white line sort of that I've drawn here so far is the uncatalyzed reaction. Right. Now if I include a, well, let's do a violet line. So what happens is we, we lower this activation energy here. We lower it, right? It's not as high before the, before the reaction proceeds to the products. And now what we've done, 
is we've made the activation energy only this high, right? So the activation energy for the catalyzed reaction is lower. How does that actually happen? Well, I mentioned this whole idea of a transition state. And what the transition state essentially is, it's a high energy intermediate between between um, the reactants and the products. Right. If you recall back from like from organic chemistry, the idea of an SN2 reaction, there was the pentavalent intermediate where carbon sort of has five things bound to it, even though it really doesn't. That high en that's a high energy intermediate. Um, that's sort of the same idea here. There's a transition state at this point here. Right. The transition state exists here. That that high energy, that high energy is due to this transition state. Obviously, the transition state is going to be different for you know for different reactions. But the whole idea is that um, that the uh, transition state is a high energy intermediate. So what we do is we stabilize it. Now stable means low energy, right? So if stable means low energy and we stabilize the transition state, we lower the energy of the transition state and that is actually how we lower the activation energy. So that allows, um, that what that allows for is it's more likely that reactants will reach that activation energy, they'll reach that, that, um, that that activation energy and begin to proceed to products more easily. Okay, which and, and essentially that just means they'll they'll reach products faster. So that is particularly how um, how enzymes work, and I hope that was that was pretty helpful. Um, I'll see you in the next video when I talk about uh, Michaelis-Menten, the Michaelis-Menten model, and and things involving that.